It feels like a lifetime, but it's only been since the third week of December that we decided that Caroline should be in palliative care. And here we are in the first week of February, and she's still holding her own. We're doing our best to keep her spirits high, keep her appetite robust, and to keep her potential discomfort level down. Now, one of the main things that we've always done in terms of modalities in this household, whether our animal family members were just older, creakier, um, dealing with everything from hip dysplasia to digestive issues to cancer. We've always leaned on acupuncture and also cold laser therapy, and we've always noticed a difference in the quality of their lives. So every 10 days or so, our house call vet, Dr. Liz Fernandez, comes over and spends some time with needles and lasers and Caroline. And we don't want to make the whole process seem like a process. So when Dr. Fernandez comes over, you can see we just, you know, sit on the ground and just talk as normal. And at some point we know that Caroline is feeling comfortable and we'll bring her over. We never want to rush it. And you can always tell when Caroline's ready to be moved or be put in a certain spot. Oh, <laughs> she immediately was like, okay. That's you right. know what we're going to do, huh? That's Bye -bye. okay. Yeah. This feels good. And then we just sort of settle in here. If you've not seen cold laser therapy in action before, it is a non-invasive treatment. It uses low-level light therapy and it improves blood flow. It stimulates natural healing. We've used it before and I've seen it used for a host of issues, including and really specifically helping to ease pain, reducing inflammation, allowing muscles to relax, enhancing circulation. I mean, one of the most dramatic uh, changes I've ever seen was with our dearly departed dog, Mushka, who you can see a video on that I'll link to, where we would take her in for the same type of treatment. And she had pretty severe hip dysplasia. And I know that between physical therapy and these two modalities, we definitely added time to her life. There are lasers that are used like in surgery that you can cut tissue cut with, with yeah. and stuff like that. And it's, I mean, it, it actually literally will burn the tissue. Right. Okay, and it, that's how it kind of, it sears it basically. And so it's a lot more powerful. And I don't even know what the, the wavelength is for that kind of a laser, but this one is much gentler. And so there's no heat involved with it. Right. So that's why it's called a cold laser. She's been also oddly just more present in general. I think that's beautiful. She's, I know. Yeah. She's taken her space, which yeah. is... Um, that's right. That's what you're about. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Right. I mean, you've worked, obviously, with a lot of animals in terms of uh, cancers and... Yeah. Do you notice that sort of a change? It's one thing that can happen. It's, you know, there are other animals. I mean, I've seen a lot of them that, you know, when they're just not feeling quite as well, they get very loving. She will not let Mina out of her sight. Like, Mina walks in a room and yeah. it's just following her every move, you know, like right now. <laughs> yeah. She's like, she's safe if Mina's around. Do you remember who saved you from the ditch? No. She goes, I know you did. I think her relationship with Minu has gotten so rock solid, but in the meantime, there's this sort of pulling away from me that I've noticed, which I'm just fine, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, whatever just, she yeah. needs to do, but it's really interesting. Now that the cold laser is over, it's on to acupuncture. So these are the needles, and the nice thing about using the needles, and I do them along her back again, is that in acupuncture, there's a meridian down the back. It's called the bladder meridian. And it has points that are impactful for pretty much all the organ systems in general, like muscles and tissues and things like that, all along the back. Mm -hmm. We're targeting specific organs. We're targeting the spine because she does have some you know, back issues. Mm -hmm. when, when we stick a needle in, in a point, we have shown scientifically that there are several things that can happen. There can be endorphin release, which is the body's natural painkiller. There can be neurotransmitters that are, that are released, endocrine factors that can be released. So there's a whole 
myriad of things that actually do happen, including even the stimulation of stem cell production. Oh, wow. There is this idea that what we're doing is stimulating the body to do what the body needs to do. We're just kind of knocking on the door saying, hey, um, there's something going on with the blood pressure and you need to deal with it. So, Which, I mean, in the essence of, of holistic medicine, it is more about the way of the leading body. the body to the water, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I know. If you've not seen acupuncture in action before, if you've not had it yourself or seen it done on animals, it's pretty novel at this point. Most know what it is, and it dates back thousands of years. It's a key component of traditional Chinese medicine. And as you can see, it involves inserting these very thin and painless sterile needles into targeted areas of the body, and it treats a large range of health conditions and symptoms. And vets like Dr. Fernandez, who are trained in acupuncture, use it for problems such as arthritis and joint inflammation and nerve injury, skin problems, asthma, and we've used it here with cats and dogs that are facing any kind of digestive issues. And Caroline is definitely not our first family member being treated for cancer with acupuncture as well. How long have you been doing acupuncture? Uh, I was certified in 2020, no, 2002, 2002. June of 2002, yeah. Wow. Where'd you go to school? <laughs> Davis, UC Davis. Oh, did you really? Yeah. She's like, yeah. she's now she's at that point where she's churros. like, is yeah. this, is it true time yet? <laughs> There's the spot. I forgot about oh, the spot. Oh, there you go. Finally. There's my spot. When you're dealing with something that has so little yeah. blueprint to it, like pancreatic cancer in your cat, anything that you can do where at the end of it you feel 100% sure you did right by her, mind, body, and spirit, because it is one of those only times where we get that feeling of knowing we're doing the right thing in the moment to make her life as good as it can be. I mean, outside of cuddles and treats, which we are leaning really heavily on these days. It gives you a sense of well-being that's really kind of hard to describe. In fact, I'm having a hard time describing it. I just know that I feel better, Minu feels better, because it is the best in care that we can give her, other than the aforementioned treats and cuddles and reassurance and soft tones and the least amount of change in her life as we can give her. And at the end of the day, that's what we can do, is just treat every day like every other day that has been with the addition of a few things to make her feel better in the long run. Like I said, we are about six weeks now into this journey. We don't know how long we've got, but any day where it ends like this one is a blessing and we'll take every blessing we can get.